Welcome to Wave 4. In Wave 4, we have created better possibilities for collaboration and a smoother user experience for everyone. We are excited to present new features for Power PPM, Power Hub, Team Planner, Time for Teams, and What If. Welcome to this introduction to What If. We are going to start within Power PPM with our portfolios. All of the portfolios that have been created and we can also see how many initiatives are connected to that specific portfolio. In the Grow portfolio, which has 17 initiatives connected to it along with some metadata, the portfolio also has defined a budget, selected the initiative and prioritized them. So now it's time to create a scenario within What If. I click here to create my scenario. When creating a scenario, I give it a name. Then I define when it starts and the duration of the scenario. I can select all of the connected initiatives by filtering here. So for my Grow portfolio, the 17 initiatives in the portfolio are also selected. And then I'm going to allocate a budget for each year. So 5 million for the current year, 25 million for the next year, and 10 million for year three, because we don't want to over allocate that far in the future. If I want, I could, of course, also filter by all the projects within the current stage or search for a specific project here. If we have any custom fields that we want to show within our scenario, I can select them here to be shown when I create the scenario. Next, I'll give the scenario a name. Then click Create. Then our What If engine creates a replica of the selected initiatives and the financial forecasts, budget and actual spend. This means that I can freely work with the data without disrupting any of my current running initiatives within any of my portfolios. Once my scenario is created, I can click on Show Graphs. This provides me with an overview of all projects that I have selected within my portfolio. Within the current year, I can also see how much has already been spent and how much is still remaining compared to the budget. For 23, I can see that the expected spends exceed what we have currently budgeted for that year. It is also possible to select the ETC and the accumulated ETC. This provides information on how much a specific project is going to cost within the current scenario. Now I can exclude specific projects from my scenario and then see the effect on estimated cost within the current year because the project will either be paused or terminated. And it also sums up the main drivers that we have for our scenario. We can also take this specific project and move it along the timeline so if we're not going to work on it in 2022, I can drag it to the end of 2023. which is reflected in the expected costs within those time periods. Now, if I expect, for example, the project to be delayed, I can also extend the project timeframe for that project. This means that we will also affect the projected cost for this project. I can, of course, also do the opposite, where I take a different project and if I expect that we need to close this project before we start 2024. I can decrease the duration of the project and get an overview of the financial effect while still retaining information on the project baseline. If I want to get an overview of milestones for the different projects, I can click here to toggle the milestones on or off. And then we can see the milestones for those projects that have milestones specified. I can also expand the individual projects to get further information on the milestones. With PowerBoard, it is now possible on a portfolio to have a Kanban-style view of all your initiatives, being able to take those initiatives that are to be dated and drag them into a specific year. You will see at the top that it is possible to set up roll-ups to show, for instance, total budget and total benefits. When dragging and dropping in new initiatives, it is possible to see an approximation for this year. So, 
In this way, we can do a lightweight simulation and rank the different projects. So what you will see is if I move an initiative further up in the rank, the ranks on all the different initiatives are updated within the different buckets. It is possible to set up different board views. So for instance, to choose the category between projects and how the budget is distributed between those categories. It is also possible to see if the project or initiative is overdue or on track directly from within the board. It is possible to search, it is possible to filter, and it is possible to add new initiatives directly from within the Kanban board. It is also possible to edit existing initiatives. Welcome to the introduction of the major Power PPM improvements. We are introducing significant improvements to the Power Gantt chart. We have focused on the small details that matter, such as being able to quickly add a task at the bottom of your plan, and also easily update the information that is needed, for instance, copying dates, copying the names of the tasks, and quickly assigning people. You can copy those assignments to more tasks, which saves you time during the planning phase of your project management. The entire entry can be dragged and dropped by activating it on the left side. Additionally, you can now type and you can copy directly just by using Ctrl C, Ctrl V, like you're used to, from, for instance, Excel. Welcome to the introduction of the Power PPM Power Matrix. As part of Wave 4, we are introducing the Power Matrix, an easy way to visualize which initiatives to select based on a 2x2 two two matrix. In this instance, impact and effort. On the left, it is possible to drag and drop projects into the grid. Automatically, a score is calculated and the initiatives are ranked on the right side. The power matrix is easy to configure, supporting 2x2, two 3x3, two, three three, or even custom numbers. You can quickly visualize what the final result will look like. Furthermore, it is possible to automatically tag the items. You can also select display names, select a specific color for the area, text colors and border colors. It is also possible to adjust scale formats and area alignment to fully customize your power matrix. Welcome to this presentation of the new cross-tenant feature in PowerHub. In earlier versions, the PowerHub had to be installed on the same Azure tenant as Dataverse. It is now possible to add a new Dataverse source from another tenant when you add a new source. You have the name, description and other existing fields as before, but we have added a new tenant mode. Default is the same tenant but you can now also select cross-tenant, which will open up for entering tenant ID of the Dataverse tenant, client ID and client secret. A guide for generating these will be available after release. Welcome to this demonstration of our new restore feature in PowerHub. In PowerPBM, I can access my PowerHub Restore Demo 3 initiative to work on my timeline. I have selected a task that I don't need anymore and I want to delete it. However, instead of clicking delete at the task level, I accidentally delete the entire initiative. This means that my PowerHub Restore Demo 3 initiative has gone from the list. The initiative and related data are deleted. Before our new restore feature, all of the data would have to be recreated manually, which means that historical data and other references are lost, potentially causing issues in reports. We could also have restored the entire environment, but that means losing all other changes made after the initiative was deleted. This is avoided with our new restore feature that makes it possible to restore deleted initiatives. First, I will show you using the new feature embedded in Power PPM. In the administration area, we have added a new restore page. We can see the restore page and select a restore action. I have selected the default, restore deleted. 
In the table list, I can choose the table where I have deleted my data. And in this case, it was an initiative, so let's select that one. This brings up a list of deleted initiatives from the last 30 days. I can change the period here to go back further if needed. In this demo, the same initiative has been deleted multiple times, but the one I'm interested in is the last one I deleted. So when I click on the deleted initiative, PowerHub will start analyzing all relevant relationships and fetching the historical data from the PowerHub database. This can take a few minutes. When it has analyzed initiatives, the table, and the different relationships, it has found some business processes, risks, cost plans, tasks, etc. I can select or deselect which tables to restore in the drop-down list. I can choose to keep them all selected. In the detailed area, we can see it found one initiative, and I can scroll to see the different fields in that table and data. I can double-click on it to get a better overview, and I can see the other related data that was deleted when I deleted the initiative, such as tasks. There are eight tasks listed with the names of the tasks, the data, and so on. This does not require any action. It is just for verification to see what data will be restored. If I'm satisfied, I click Restore, and it will start the process of restoring. PowerHub will get the data from the PowerHub database and bring it back to Dataverse in the right order. It will use the same keys and restore both deleted data and deleted links. We can see that it is finished and succeeded restoring the data. I will close this one and then I will go back to the Power PPM area. Go down to Initiatives and we can see that the PowerHub Restore Demo 3 initiative is back and it has restored the stage it was in. It has restored the link to the portfolio, the KPIs, the owner, the timeline, the financials and so on. So this is how the new Restore feature works. The feature will be released as a preview feature. This means that it should be used as a last resort when mistakes happen and not as a 100% reliable undo button. There might be cases where it is not able to restore all of the data or where the restored data will cause issues for existing data. Another way of accessing the restore feature is through the Power Portal. Here we have the Sources overview and I can click on the Power PPM Essential Source. This brings up a new tab called Restore Data Preview which has the exact same functionality. And now we present the new feature in PowerHub that controls the historical data recording. To access this feature, go to Sources and choose your source. In this example, I choose my Power PPM Essentials source and then navigate to Tables. Here, I have my overview of Tables and I can see which one has been selected for synchronization with the option to toggle, to disable or enable historical data. Enabling historical data means that PowerHub records changes to data and stores it in the historical table. Disabling historical data will delete all recorded historical data and no longer record data in the future. This could be relevant for very large tables with big data fields and or a high number of events or changes where you don't need the historical data. This feature can also be used to clear existing historical data and reset the recording. For example, in a test environment where you want to clear all of the historical data that has been generated during the test phase. If you enable historical data again, it will record data from that moment in time. Welcome to this demonstration of the brand new feature Fast Deletion in Team Planner. If you are a line manager and are on the Allocation tab, you can enable this new feature by selecting the gear icon and enabling fast deletion. A warning will appear as deletion is irreversible. If you accept, it will show the delete icons on named resources. By clicking the delete icon on each of the named resources, that resource is deleted. As a line manager, you are not able to delete any generic resources since you are not the project manager of the project. If you are a project manager, you will also have the possibility to enable fast deletion and you will receive the same warning. When accepting this, delete icons will appear as well. You will notice no delete icons are visible on the named resources. This is because if you are a project manager, 
you will also have the possibility to enable fast deletion and you will receive the same warning. When accepting this, delete icons will appear as well. You will notice no delete icons are visible on the named resources. This is because, as a project manager, you cannot delete named resources. However, you can delete a full contract including generic and named resources. Project managers can delete a full contract. Take this contract including a generic resource and a named resource. If you delete this, the full contract is gone. You can also delete groupings. From the gear icon, you can find the group and see it is grouped by RBS. You can delete the full groups, including multiple contracts. What you can see is that all the generic resources and allocated resources have been removed with one single click. Now I will show you the new help section in Team Planner. In the top bar, you can find the help section at the end to the right as a question mark icon. There are four different areas. First, you have the info page. Then you have the FAQ, videos and support. All these sections are fully configurable if you are the administrator in Team Planner. These sections can be tailored to your end users and what will be most relevant for them. For this demonstration, we have a simple info page with some overall information on the help page. We have also included information on what to expect in the other sections. On the FAQ page, you can add some frequently asked questions or you could do sections in terms of new releases and some FAQ on the newest features if they are enabled. In the video section, you can link to videos that have been created for training purposes or some general videos on how the application works. In the support section, you can set up a place for users to ask questions. That could be IT or the PMO. It could also just be a general email where users can send questions related to the application. Everything is fully configurable in order to ensure the correct support for your users. Welcome to this introduction to Time for Teams. Today we are going to present a new feature for enabling and disabling the Time Management KPI traffic lights. When accessing your Time for Teams application, you have the KPI at the bottom of your timesheet in the total row. The colors indicate the number of hours you've put into a day. By hovering over the color indicator, a box will show the description of your current status. The colors change according to the number of hours you enter and the related KPI. In this example, the color changes to amber when adding four hours. By adding an additional three hours, the color changes to green. Our new feature allows you to enable or disable the color indicators. Click on the gear icon in the top right corner. You are now directed to the Time for Teams Admin Center. Then click on Time Configuration. On this page, you can change a number of settings for your Time for Teams solution. Removing the tick from the Enable RAG indicators in Timesheet to disable the colors and click on the watch in the top right corner to return to the Timesheet overview. The colors have now been disabled when typing numbers on tasks. To enable the colors again, Simply return to the Admin Center and tick the Enable RAG Indicators in Timesheet box and return to the Timesheet Overview. Remember, enabling and disabling this feature and other settings in Time for Teams is only possible for administrators. Today we are going to present a new feature for enabling and disabling the in-app Timesheet Charts. When accessing your Time for Teams application, you can see personal timesheet data by clicking the chart icon in the top right corner. These charts can now be enabled and disabled by the Time for Teams administrator. Click on the gear icon in the top right corner. You are now directed to the Time for Teams admin center. Then click on time configuration. Remove the tick from the enable native charts to disable the personal user charts. When disabling the charts, the chart icon will also disappear from the top right corner. Click on the watch in the top right corner to return to the timesheet overview. To enable the charts again, simply just return to the admin center and tick the enable native charts 
and the chart icon will reappear, and you are able to click and see personal timesheet charts.